Well, the streets of Gotham are still held in the grasp of the Scarecrow's terror. It will be up to Dick Grayson and his allies to head to the sky to defeat the Magistrate once and for all. All this and more in the pages of Nightwing number 86. Let's hop on in together and find out what happens next, shall we? So then, picking up directly from where the last issue had left off, Nightwing, Batgirl, and Tim Drake watch on in horror as they see Oracle's clock tower destroyed by the Magistrate. You see, they assumed that Batgirl, Stephanie Brown, and Cassandra Kane were actually still inside the building when it came down, which means they do absolutely everything in their power to try and clear the rubble. And oh boy, do they sure want this to be a dramatic moment filled with a lot of drama. The only problem is there's no drama to be had for several reasons. One, you know Cass and Steph are A-OK -okay because they're getting their own Batgirls book soon. And also, you know they made it and are A-OK -okay if you read the backup story in the last Batman book. This is actually going to be a major theme unfortunately throughout this last Nightwing time and that is the book kind of being undercut by other things that are happening in Fear State at the moment. Eventually though Barbara, Tim, and Dick do realize that the Batgirls are A-OK -okay, and they all reconvene to go over their next course of action. They know they need to stop Seer but unfortunately she's broadcasting from the Magistrate's Flying Fortress meaning the only way they're going to take her down is if they can get up there. Now at first I was thinking ooh is Dick Grayson going to use his newfound fortune to maybe buy them some jetpacks or maybe try and buy out Simon Saints Corporation from under him? No, those would be interesting things. Instead, they figure the easiest way to get up to Magistrate HQ would be to ambush a bunch of the Magistrate soldiers, steal their uniforms, and then use one of their flying platforms to get up there. Yes, it really is just that easy. Apparently, Magistrate security is just that bad, and I also have to wonder if it was this easy to infiltrate their headquarters. Why didn't Batman him himself try and do this earlier. Again, any and all tension that may have existed just evaporates into thin air. And honestly, when the characters are just hanging out and bantering with each other and it feels like Tom Taylor just threw up his hands and said, screw it, I'm not going to treat this as some sort of important chapter in a bigger important story, but just treat it as a farce, it's when the book actually kind of gets enjoyable. You see, Tim, Cass, and Steph eventually discover that Dick and Barbara had kissed back in a previous issue and they spent and the bulk of this book teasing them about it. Again, it's cute, it's fun. And it has absolutely nothing to do with Fear State, which again is maybe why it's actually the best thing about this story. Obviously, the good guys don't manage to make it that far into Magistrate HQ before they are eventually discovered, which means they have to fight their way out. And of course, there's still the matter of Seer, the evil hacker who had taken control of the Oracle network and who I guess is still kind of the de facto villain of this story. Well, guess what? She just kind of screws off. Off. Nightwing and the others end up missing her completely as she sets the entire Magistrate HQ to crash down onto Gotham City. Which, you know, probably wouldn't be a bad thing at first when you stop and consider that that was basically what the superheroes had come here to do anyway, but they invent a new 11th hour problem and that is apparently some of Gotham's richest and most influential paid Simon Saint to take their kids up in the Flying Fortress to keep them safe from all the chaos of the Fear State. So, that means that they have to save these children before eventually dealing with Simon Saint himself because hey they're here aren't they? What's really disappointing about this is that Nightwing and Batgirl have never actually met or talked to Simon Saint before this moment and yet they're the ones who actually end up bringing him down and not Batman the person who you know had actually had dealings with him over in the main Batman book. Also if you did read the main Batman book from this week then you'll already know that there's some inconsistencies going on between this book and that one. For one when Nightwing and Batgirl take Saint down, they're not wearing the Peacekeeper armor, where in the other book they were. But honestly, who the hell cares, right? This story and this event is almost over, so I should really count myself lucky. Barbara is not only able to take control back of the Oracle network, but she's also able to gather some very important smoking gun information that will allow the authorities to take Saint and the Magistrate down once and for all. Together, they all safely make a water landing of the Magistrate HQ, so no one going to get crushed by it when it falls out of the sky, but wait, we're not done. We got one last little stinger. It turns out one of those teenagers that they had saved from the Magistrate was actually the real Seer all along. But if you want to know what became of Seer, be sure to pick up the new Batgirls book when that launches. Honestly, I think that's the opposite of a commercial. That makes me actively not want to pick it up. And so that was Nightwing number 86, everybody. The grand finale in a very bland series 
of tie-ins to a very bland and uninteresting event. A fact of which stings all that much more when we know full well that all the people involved are capable of oh so much better work, but here they just weren't. They were just kind of going through the motions and ticking boxes until it was all done. The real problem is those stakes and drama, and that is there is so very little of it. The heroes don't get the villain they're after, and because of that have to go after a villain that they've never actually dealt with before. It's all just so skippable, so forgettable, and I cannot wait for this book to return to its regularly scheduled programming. Overall, I would give this one a 5 out of 10. Hey there everyone, it's your pal Kate Joel again, and if you're seeing my face right now, that means you watched at the end of the video, and I'll always be grateful for that. Retention helps in this crazy YouTube game, and so does becoming a patron. If you head on down to the description, you can find a link to my Patreon page. Recently just redid all the tiers, a lot of cool stuff offering up there, exclusive commentaries, exclusive polls, uh, behind-the-scenes concept art for Capes and Quest, that's the brand new D&D show I've started soon. Never been a better time to become a patron. You become a patron for as little as a dollar a month and help the channel grow and you know help me continue to deliver content like what you just saw so i want to thank you all and i will see you again next time bye bye